Boom! I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. I'm going to do something totally different today. I'm just going to go straight on over to the rock quarry and talk about a Mac B model for Carter Coal Company pulling bottom dump trailers by Neo Scale Models. If any of you out there have any information at all on Carter Coal Company of Bluefield, West Virginia, please drop it in the comments below because I couldn't find anything at all about them. And I'm skipping the history this time on the trailers and the trucks because I've already talked about the history of the B model and the history of the bottom dump trailers. And I'll link those down in the, the description down below. Now to head on over to the rock quarry and get on with the review. <laughs> Never mind my little scorpion buddy here. He just wants to break dance. And this is Neo Scale Models Mac B61 with bottom dump trailers. California set of bottom dump trailers. It's for Carter Coal Company. It comes in a special Neo package, which is designed to hold a clear plastic display case, which the truck is mounted to, and the plastic uh, blister that the trailers are mounted. It fits all in one box. It's got the logo on top. It says it's 164 scale. It's got the logo on the end. Now that sticker is something that American Excellence puts on when they ship these things. And then underneath it's got all your warnings and everything else. And then I'll bring it up so you can see it is Neo 64057. These here are distributed by Speedel Replicars, which actually owns Neo scale models. Neo is a started out in the Netherlands and then it was bought by a German and turned into a German company. Now let's go on and open this guy up so we can look at it. And these guys can be a little tricky to open. So be careful. You don't want to tear that thing. It's easy to do. And then we'll pull out the back part here first. And if you'll note, it has the mirror piece in the back behind it. So we'll pull that piece out. Then we'll open the other end. You could just slide that out that way, but it's easier to do it this way. Set that aside. This up. You can see the truck itself is in the clear display case with a hard black plastic base that it's screwed down to and the clear display case, just like all the rest of their trucks. Then they use the same plastic blister piece that they use to hold the trailers by themselves. So they just made a box that could hold both of them end to end. Great idea. Smart thinking on their part. Now let's open this part up and pull these trailers out. See, they got this clear plastic sleeve and then they got the two-piece blister inside. Does a great job. And they t use a little tab to glue the... To, they use a little tab to hold this piece in place. I'm just going to go and cut it on this end because I don't need to cut both of them. Pick it up and then pull the trailers out. Now this trailer set doesn't have the top pieces, the cover pieces that they have. Set that aside. And then we'll set these further back. Just like that. And then let's bring this truck up. Now you can see it has Mac B61T 1957 written on the base plate. B61s were made forever though. It just clips in place, and to get the truck off the base plate, it has two Phillips head screws underneath. Just hold with one finger above the frame and your thumb under the frame just to make sure you don't drop it. Then you'll need a nice Phillips head screwdriver, the right size Phillips head screwdriver, and then unscrew it. It's a great way to do this, but if you don't hold it right, you'll break parts off the truck or drop the truck. 
You don't want to do that because that'll break parts. That has a good tendency to break parts too. So don't want to do that either. Now we'll set that down and pick it up. It's also got these two little plastic things. Only point for them that I've ever found is it just hides the screw. So if you look under, you don't see a screw underneath. Put those there so I don't lose them and set this aside. Don't want to lose those screws because I want to be able to put it back into the box. Now, leave that sit there and let's just pick these trailers up and do them one at a time. Because they're not, they're almost identical, but they're not quite identical. Out West, on their trailer sets, they do not run landing gear on the second trailer. It's only on the first land trailer. It has a kingpin there that's set up to utilize, so you can see it hooked to any of the Neo trucks. It really needs a single axle to haul these because of where that landing gear is. Or you could hook it up to a single axle DCP or any other truck, the same size kingpin. You can see the side detail of the trailer. It's got a trailer number of 534, so you know what trailer it is. It sits on five-spoke Dayton-style wheels that are all just body matched. There's a fender over the wheel, and then there's a resin tire, even though it kind of feels soft rubber, but it's really a resin. These here are actually a lot more durable than you would think they are. Turning them up, you can see it's got a truck rear differential and spring suspension. Very common use back in the day is just put a truck axle underneath a truck drive axle. They were plentiful, and they were, so they were easy to put underneath trailers. Downside is it added extra weight to the trailer if you had to go over the scale. Unnecessary weight. You can see the landing gear bottom there. It does not go up or down. It's fixed. So when it sits down, it'll be drooping if it's not hooked to the trailer. Not sure what that is, but there's the bottom which opens up. But it doesn't actually open on this trailer. It's fixed. You can see it has 534 on that mud flap. A license plate on this trailer, which they didn't put on the other ones. And then two jewel style brake lights really nice there's your air tank and it has a West Virginia license plate makes sense it's Carter Coal Company of Bluefield West Virginia although these are kind of odd trailers to haul back here don't really see them back here but they probably did back in this time period haul some of these around here and then we got over here to the passenger side you can see it's got the fender there, five-spoke Dayton, duals and tires, number 534, nice structure design, and you can see the landing gear. Turning him up a bit, there's the hopper. This area you could fill up with coal easily, although I think the coal dust wouldn't, wouldn't be too good for your paint, but you could do that. I'd put grain in it, that'd do the same thing. The bottom, though, is fixed it won't fall out and it won't actually open kind of a bummer but this trailer is all resin instead of resin and die cast which die cast makes moving parts a whole lot easier than resin does now around to the front you can see where you would hook up your lines your kingpin and a little more structure detail on the trailer plus you can see the front design for the landing gear now I'll pick up the other trailer because it is a little different and there we go. It says 713. And note, no landing gear. Because this would actually not be on a converter dolly. It would be on a turntable fixed axle. Pretty cool. That's the way they run them out west. It's got the same five-spoke wheel with rubber tires. Fender. Same detail. Basically, it's the same trailer except for no landing gear. On the back, it's got the 713. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like it buzz. Both trailers have different license plate numbers. First one has 68987, and then the other one has 72501. That's a neat, neat little touch that Neo did. Normally, they just put the same plate on every truck, 
And a lot of times they'd put the same trailer number on each trailer. They didn't do that. Each trailer has its own plate and number. That's awesome. There's also, you can see on the back of the second trailer, it does have the hitch pin for another converter dolly. Just like on the first trailer, they just a ring that sits around a pin. Got your individual brake lights, air tank there, around to this side, 713, frame structure, no landing gear. Inside the same, it's empty, but there is a solid bottom. It doesn't open. Same axle detail, rear axle off of a truck, pretty cool. Kingpin that will go into a converter dolly or a truck. And then you can see that's where the fifth, the landing gear would mount. But they didn't put it on it because they didn't usually run them on these. Round to the front, you got your airlines. And that should be actually coming straight out of the converter dolly. Or the turntable tr axle going to the front. Now we'll pick up the converter dolly because this is a true converter dolly. It has spring suspension, five spoke, bring it in a little more, five spoke Dayton wheels, so, uh, rubber tires, which aren't really rubber, they're resin, but they feel like rubber. It's got the ring that goes around the hook on the trailer, fifth wheel that pivots a little bit, and it'll hold these trailers or DCP trailers if you really want to. Nice vintage tread pattern all around on every trailer. Underneath, you can see that same exact axle detail. It says 164 Neo Scale Models tampoed on the frame. On the back, just an axle detail. And to the front, again, just looks like a converter dolly. Now I'll hitch that up and hitch the other trailer up, and then we'll talk about the truck. I seem to be in a Mac rut lately. Here we go. Here is the Mac. This is Neo Scale Models 1957 Mac B61 model. Now they did not chrome plate the mirrors or air horns or exhaust stack. They just painted them silver, which makes them probably more accurate than the original because they would have just been polished uh, chrome. Uh, they would have just been polished metal back then. They wouldn't have really have been chrome. Mirrors might have been chrome, but the stack would have just been polished. It's got diamond tread pattern on the steps for the fuel tank, step tank. It's got your air cleaner there on the side of the hood. It's got that little bitty molding right there. And Mac and Thermodyne and a Bulldog there. And then they got their version of the Mac Bulldog hood ornament up there. I think theirs is a little better than first gears, but that's okay says Carter Cole Company, Bluefield, West Virginia on the cab door. And then it's got soft vacuum form windows all around. You can see the beautiful. Theirs isn't quite as thick. Theirs is a little bit taller and not quite as thick as first gears. But still, it's very common Mac. little taller tailpipe turned out. Pretty nice. Grab bar and the door handle are also painted in silver. And then the heat shield detail is just a decal that's wrapped around the muffler. Pretty nice. Round to the back. License plate. Again, another West Virginia license plate that's not been used on either of the first two trailers. The brake lights are painted red. And you can see that vintage tread pattern. No mud flaps, though. The fifth wheel will haul any DCP first gear trailer. But it's great for these singles. Being a single axle, it's so great for these guys. It'll pull them trailers great. Round to the other side. Unlike first gear, they put the Mac writing as a tampo and a ring on the center caps of the axles. That is sharp. Very, very fine detail. Hard to replicate, but they did it. It's got the chrome. It's got the uh, painted diamond plate fuel tanks battery box six spoke Dayton's rims are all body colored it has the door handle and the grab bar as painted silver as well as the mirror same detail up on the hood and you can see the bulldog 
There's also a turn signal on each one that's painted orange. Turn around to the front. You see that license plate again. Truck number of 451. It has individual jewel style headlights with sealed beam uh, pattern on them and individual jewel styled marker lights. The driving lights down there. That is sharp. Very, very fine detail. You can see the grill is painted black instead of chrome. It says Mac there. It's got the silver stripe or the silver center bar because it's a butterfly, a butterfly style hood. There's another license plate and it's got the big push bumper. That makes a lot of sense because this truck was used on a coal company to use that big push bumper right there. Turning them up this way, it has vacuum form front windshields and photo etched windshield wipers. Be very careful. Those things there are easy to flick off and they're very hard to put back on. Up on the roof, it has individual bullet style roof lights that are amber on the front and silver on the back. Also, you can see the two bell uh, air horn. This time the little bell is on the inside and the big bell is on the outside. Pretty cool they made them a little different right there. Now let's go on and hitch this guy up so you can see it all hitched together. Ah, I gotta back her up. That takes talent to back up doubles. They bend in too many places. They don't really have free rolling wheels. But that's okay, it'll keep it from rolling off your shelf. Now how about that? Neo Scale Models, 1957 Mac B61 single axle day cab tractor hauling double bottom dumps. It's for Carter Coal Company of Bluefield, West Virginia. Neo Scale Models, these trucks are going to go up very soon because Neo is out of business. They have stopped making trucks. So you need to make sure you start getting those Neo trucks now because in very short time, they're going to be worth quite a bit because they're almost impossible to find and they're selling out fast with all the dealers that still have the remaining stock. So with that, I sell Neo scale models on my website. There's a link down in the description below so you can go buy this model while the limited supplies last and a few other Neos that are still available until they run out. Also, I've got a link in the description down below that is for my report on resin versus diecast. It tells why resin models have snuck into the market and why you need to have resin models in your collection and why you really should not be afraid of having a resin model in your collection. Grab it with that other link in the description below. And as always, please go on and smash that like button and share this video with your friends. That all really helps me out with YouTube. And if you enjoy this content and want to see more great product reviews, along with histories of the real vehicles, please subscribe and join my YouTube family and become a 64th Gear Jammer. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk.